Hello, today I want to talk about Earth is our inheritance. Heaven was made for God and his angels. So let's jump right in and start. I'm going to have um, probably some little breakups in between because I'm going to be searching the word for um, the scriptures that I want to use to explain this concept. All right, so let's uh, start with Psalm 37, 9. All right, let's see, Psalm 37. Okay, 9 and then 29. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Now, I also want to make clear here one thing that is very important for us to always keep in mind, and that is that God is never changing. He doesn't change. He will never change, not ever. It doesn't matter even after he brought Christ. He has not changed. The only thing that changed is that we are no longer under the law. That's it. Jesus came to set us free from the letter of the law. He nailed the law and our sin to the cross. Now the law is written in our hearts. We don't live it out. We do not externally force ourselves to live out the law. Now the new two commandments, and there's only two, is one, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and body and two to love your neighbor as yourself right think about that jesus came to fulfill the requirements of the law and that is all the requirements of the law and he did that on the cross okay not one jot or tittle shall pass from the law until all these things be fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled them. That is why he said it is finished on the cross. Okay, moving on. Uh, Psalm 37, 29. And the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. Who are the righteous? Those who are the elect of God, the saints, those who are in God. Those who were in God doing the law back before Jesus, who were Jews, and those now who are in Christ. Okay? Get it. We are all the elect of God. Any who come to him in truth. Okay, moving on. Psalm 37, 18 and 11. Okay, so 11 and then 18. Hmm. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Hmm. How wonderful will that be? Peace right here on earth. First in the millennium, and then once this earth is destroyed, the new earth and the new heaven will be created. But we will still inherit the earth. That is our inheritance. Earth was created for man. It was created for us for eternity. Eleven and eighteen. The Lord knows the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever, which is the earth. Isn't that something? I love it. Proverbs 2.21 and 10.30. So, Proverbs, where are ya? Proverbs 2. 21. For the upright will dwell in the land, and the blameless, blameless 
will remain in it. Right? Okay? All right. Let's go on. 10.30. The righteous will never be removed. You hear that? Will never be removed. Never. He doesn't say, will one day we be removed. He says, will never, never ever be removed. Okay? But the wicked will not inhabit the earth. Hmm. How do you like that? Pretty special. Okay. Okay, so there's a point also I want to make. Everyone, angels, creatures, and beings, praise God in heaven. All of them do. And I, I want to show after about the 24 elders in heaven. That is a very important thing because there are so many people who claim that those elders are humans and they're not. They're not humans and I will show you that. I'm going to show you that pretty clearly and I'm going to help you to understand that. Okay? It's, it's very important and, and there's a lot of proof in actuality that those 24 elders are not human beings. And then Psalm 25, 13. Nope, I went way too far. I'm all the way back in Job, which is a fabulous book. But that's not where we are today. Although it does talk about inheritance in the book of Job also, and it being the earth. Psalms 25, or Psalm yeah, it's Psalm. Some people say Psalms. Some people say Psalm. It's Psalm, according to the word. Psalm 25, 13. 13. He himself shall dwell in prosperity, and his descendants shall inherit the earth. Not once. Have I ever seen one verse that says we go to heaven? It doesn't say that anywhere. Not ever. We are not saved to go to heaven. We are saved to become little Christs here on earth so that we may become kings and priests with him upon the earth in the millennial kingdom. And then... When we have the new earth, then he and God will be back to as one, I believe. I absolutely believe that because I, well, different subject, different day. So, moving on. Acts 20.32 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Are you sanctified? We are all sanctified who are in Christ. He sanctifies us. And those who were in him in Jewish times, before the new covenant, were also sanctified, but they were sanctified by the law and the doing of the law and the sacrifices that they made. Moving on. Titus 3, 7. Oh, past it. I didn't mark off Titus. Titus 3, 7. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Nowhere do we see heaven. Not yet. Haven't seen it. 
neither will we ever see it. Okay? Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is being prepared for us in heaven, but we will not be there. It is also called paradise. And Jesus himself tells us, told the man on the cross, surely you will be in paradise with me today. Why would he say that? Why not say in heaven? Why not in heaven? Because that's not where humans go. They are in paradise. Whenever you hear anybody who came back from the dead, who has apparently visited heaven, according to them, they come back and they describe what? They describe paradise. They describe the new earth with the streets of gold and the pearly gates and everything else that they describe the clear waters that will be pouring out of the throne of God but are not as of yet I've never heard anybody say that it's pouring out of the throne of God right now when they visit paradise my little sister was four years old when she got hit by a car and killed she was dead on the road for 25 minutes she came to life back in the ambulance. When she came out of the hospital after about uh, a month in the hospital, she told us many things. And she never said it was heaven. She said it was where Jesus was. And she didn't say heaven. Although I, I'm sure that Jesus goes back and forth between heaven and paradise. I'm sure of it. Because where Jesus is is where we go. Right now. But not heaven. Never has it ever said heaven. Moving on. Galatians 5, 19 through 20. I think I already just did that. Yes. Okay. Colossians 1, 9 through 14. Sorry, I'm finding it here. Ephesians. All right, let's go to um, actually Ephesians 5, 5 right now anyway. We'll come back to Colossians 5. five. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. We know that his kingdom is coming to earth. We know this in the millennial kingdom. That's why it's called the kingdom. The millennial kingdom. Okay? And that is our inheritance. That is when he comes back. On the last day, when he comes back, we inherit the earth. And all evil will be removed from it. And we will live in peace. Pure peace. Pure. Simple lives again. There will be no buildings. He will have destroyed all buildings by his coming. He will destroy all mountains. All um, 
islands will not exist anymore. That's going to be something, huh? That's going to be really something. Anyway, okay. On to Colossians. How did I miss this? I don't know. It's a brand new Bible, so I'm having a little bit of trouble. There we are. Oh, Colossians 1, 9 through 14. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I pray this for you also. I pray this for anyone who comes to this video, that the Holy Spirit would give you understanding, wisdom, and knowledge so that you may be having all the truth. We must have the truth, period. He is the truth. Jesus is the truth. And if we don't have the truth in us, then we are none of his. And he is none of us. He is not in us. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him, for him, by all things, by him were all things. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I went too far anyway. Okay, but you heard about the inheritance there, right? Okay, so. Moving on. 1 Peter 3 through 12. 1 Peter. Oh, I just passed it. Uh, let's see. And I missed it again. Oh, goodness. There we are. Oh, 1 Peter 1, 3 through 12. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us. Okay, so it's being held in heaven well, we don't go to heaven where god is we can't we cannot because if we were to see him we could never live so we can't we're not allowed until after the millennium now there's a whole bunch of information about that too from the uh first church fathers uh irenaeus and polycarp Okay, there is a lot of information about the kingdom of heaven that is being reserved for us there. Okay, anyway, moving on. F who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Oh, in the last time. Mm. So we can't go before then. We can't even go before then. It's only going to be revealed to us in the last times. 
In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The revelation. What is revelation? It's a revealing, right? So Christ will be revealed at that time. On the last day, he will be revealed. There will be no question that that is Jesus Christ. To them it was revealed that, uh, where did I go? Oh my goodness. I lost it. There it is. Whom having not seen, you love. Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Of this salvation the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. So we're just as much a mystery to the angels as they are to us. Isn't that cool? That's kind of like really interesting to me. You know, I love the thought of the angels looking at us and going, wow, I just really don't understand them, Lord. Help me to understand them. And we say the same thing. I don't understand the angels. Help me to understand them and their purpose and their job. Well, he tells us that they work right alongside of us. That they're fellow workmen with us. And that goes back to saying the same thing again. That they, while they are up in heaven, are praising God with every creature and being that is up there. And those 24 elders, the 24 elders are up there forever. They've been there and they will be there forever. And I will show you that. But anyway, let's go on a little bit here. Um, Colossians, Peter, Psalm 2. Psalm 2, 7 and 8. Oh goodness, I have a fan blowing because it's so hot here in Connecticut. I'm in Connecticut right now. Psalm 2, 7 and 8. Oh, way, way, way far. I got some page stuck together. No fun. I hate having to break in new Bibles, though I needed a new one anyway. I still hate having to break in a new one. Two, seven, and eight. Okay, that was just weird. Sounded like some weird sounds. I will declare the decree of the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today have I begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. See that? There's a lot of it in Old and New Testament, mostly in Old Testament, but there is plenty in New Testament telling us that the earth is our inheritance. This is where we will live forever. First in the millennial kingdom for a thousand years as the promises made to Abraham are fulfilled and promises made to us where we will be kings and priests right alongside of Christ over areas of land we don't know which and depending on what our gifts um, and our rewards are will depend on where we are put and how many people we are put over as kings and priests with the Lord. 
I love it. Every time I sit there and I just think about it all and I just, oh, I just go crazy. I really do. I cannot wait until it all comes to pass. It's going to be glorious. Okay. Now I want to talk about paradise a little bit. Okay. So uh, let's go to Luke 23, 42, and 43. I think I have that up here. Let's see. Okay, 2342. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. How glorious is that? And then Revelation 2 7. Now, this I think is the uh, NIV or New Living or I don't know, NIV, I believe. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the one who is victorious, I will grant the right to eat of the tree of life in the paradise of God. How cool is that? 2 Corinthians 12, 4. He was caught up into paradise. The things he heard were too sacred for words, things that man is not permitted to tell. That's Paul talking about himself being taken up to the third heaven where God is or isn't. I don't know. God is in the third heaven. What we see is the first heaven. Space is the second heaven. Third heaven is just beyond the stars where we cannot see. But it's as close as him wiping it out and just rolling it up like a scroll the skies and the heavens rolling up like a scroll imagine i mean oh my gosh when he showed me that the marveling that i did was uh, unspeakable really truly so anyway so paradise is there somewhere in the heavens okay paul was taken there and spoken so many things to him about the times coming and the end and so much more and he and all of his teachings go perfectly with Christ's teachings so now I want to go on to um, excuse me Eden Eden was taken and hidden away by spirits, right? There's the sword that was going back and forth so that Adam and Eve couldn't come back. I do believe that when he took, um, after the flood, we never hear of that anymore. So I'm wondering, did people pass by it and, and see it in the times of right before Noah's ark and, and the whole flood and the whole destruction of the world, you know, that was designed for us. And I do believe that that is a part and parcel of paradise, considering the fact that the tree of life is there that bears 12 manner of fruit. And the clear, pure waters that were spoken of in Eden as well. You know? Okay. But anyway, let's talk about the 24 elders, okay? These elders are spirit beings. They were created by God to be his wise and intelligent counselors. They were created before the physical creation, along with the cherubim. Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer are the only three mentioned in the Bible the seraphim, the four living creatures, and the billions of other angels. Actually, the number of stars is representative. Each star is representative of one angel. They estimate that the stars are 200 billion trillion. And that's a rough, small estimate. So think about that. An uncountable number, John said, when he saw the angels praising God in heaven. An un, 
countable number. Now, if 200 billion trillion is a conservative guess, imagine how much more there is. Oh my gosh. And a third of those left with Satan. So there must be trillions upon trillions upon trillions upon trillions of fallen angels as well. And when the Lord opened up a vision for me, showing me when they are sent down to earth with Satan, a hole opened up into the sky and in poured so many demons. It was like red ants, like armies upon armies of red ants. And if you've seen any of the footage of the red ants th since uh, Hurricane Harvey in Houston, Texas area, where they were floating upon the water, looking like an island floating along. That's how many red ants there were. The angels, the fallen angels, the demons, being sent through that hole onto the earth at that time were so many, it was mind-boggling. And it was horrendous. It was horrific because they were snatching up people and killing them. They were eating them so that they could gather whatever life force they could suck out of their souls. And I was watching the horror and the, the creeped out feeling of the people as they were being devoured and it was just so much I, I couldn't even take it to be honest I, I was making all sorts of awful noises they thought I was having a heart attack my family did while I was having that vision anyway there are some who falsely claim that the 24 elders are taken from saved mortals this is erroneous it's an erroneous teaching that comes from a, a mistranslation of Revelation 5, 8 through 10, which states, And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for you were slain and have redeemed us, which is them, us, not us, them to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and have made them unto our God kings and priests and we and they shall reign on the earth the italicized words should be replaced by the words in brackets see the revised standard version and also in the margin of the new King James version which I have my new Bible is an NKJV I like it I love the King James, and I like the New King James. It's pretty darn fabulous. It would be impossible for these 24 elders to be res resurrected saints. John 3.13 states, now listen to this. This is very, very, very important, okay? And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. When Christ returns to this earth, those who are his will be given immortality, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. Not before. These 24 elders rule with God in heaven and have been given an advisory role to him. The resurrected saints will rule on the earth, Revelation 24. Those elders, those elders will not Let's go look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And there is another place that tells of those, of those um, elders remaining there in eternity. They remain there in eternity. They do. They live there. They're there now, and they'll always be there. We are back on the earth living out our lives here, our promised inheritance, the earth, the earth, the new earth. And it comes down out of heaven as a gift presented to us, like a bride to her husband, adorned with, oh my goodness. I mean, seriously, when you read what paradise looks like, what 
our new home earth looks like it's stunning streets of gold and those pure clear waters and the trees with the fruits and the gates made out of jewels and the jewels in the walls and the, I mean oh my gosh how rich and glorious it's gonna be and have you ever heard anybody who um, lost someone that they love and the Lord gave them a dream and how they talk about the colors that they've never seen colors like that that's because you see earth is decaying and dying because of sin that's upon it and with that sin that is upon it it's decaying this is why we're having earthquakes and hurricanes like crazy and roaring seas and everything that we're having and that we're seeing and it's getting closer and closer and closer together because the earth was made good and it wasn't made to house the sin that's upon it the lord showed me that also he showed me the earth shaking like a dog's fur trying to get the sin off of it and he showed me the sin as black like black um demons causing people to sin not causing i can't say forcing or anything like that yeah i guess causing is the right word because nobody can be forced to do anything god will not force us to accept him and satan cannot force us to do evil what happens is he talks to us he talks to us and he cajoles us and he makes us think that it's us who is thinking these thoughts and then we think on them and we think on them and we keep them keep going and going and that's how sin happens because we keep thinking about that sin and before you know it we're doing it so when you find yourself thinking about sinful things change your mind we are to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. If those thoughts are not obedient to Christ and his truth, then you have to get yourself thinking something else. Now, what I found is a great way to start thinking of something else is to just start thinking of any Bible verse that you can remember. It doesn't matter which. Because if you're thinking you can't be thinking of two or three different things at once i mean your thoughts can change like this but if you're speaking you can't think i dare you to try it speak something anything so when your thoughts are on things that you know you shouldn't be thinking of then start thinking towards the lord and start speaking out whatever Bible verses you know. Um, or just start speaking out praises. Tell him how wonderful he is. How much you adore him. How much you thank him for changing you. And for transforming your mind. And making you into who he always saw you to be. Let him send the devil fleeing from you. Praise him. And change your mind. Change your mind from those things, okay? So, 24, 20, verse 4. Revelation 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years.
Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breath of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, and the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are already, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened. This is judgment number two, or resurrection number two. Because there's going to be people who die on the earth, even in the millennial kingdom. Those are going to be the ones who just, for whatever reason, don't accept Christ as the Christ, as the Messiah. I can't imagine that. Living with him and not accepting him. I just can't even imagine it. But there will be some. Satan's going to come back and deceive many. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is called the Book of Life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one, according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found in, written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for, <clears throat> excuse me, adorned for her husband. You see, that is our inheritance. That is the new earth. It's coming down from heaven. But I don't see any people there. Do you see any people coming down with it? No. No. It's coming down to us, presented to us like a gift. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, nor crying, there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will he be his God, and he shall be my son. So, I know that there is the elders when we're here on earth. So, I've got to find that. I will probably put it in the comments as soon as I find it. But for now, this concludes my little study on our inheritance the earth it's from start to finish throughout the word it is our inheritance is the earth we don't go up to heaven ever that is a pre-tribber's belief system and it doesn't belong in those who seek speak and know the truth and Jesus Christ is the truth and if we don't know the truth then we don't know Jesus Christ and he doesn't know us, and he will not claim us as his own before his Father. Okay? I pray that you will understand it. I pray that you will pray about it, and that you will love it, and learn it, and that I will see you there one day. Eh, who knows, though? 
if you are a truth-seeking, truth-speaking person, and the Lord's got a plan for you, which he's got a plan for everybody who's alive, then I will probably meet you some point here very soon because the Lord is getting ready to start moving us, people. There is an army rising up. There is an army rising up. Are you a part of that army? I pray that you are. And if you're not, I pray that you will learn how to become one of that army. He is so good. He is so gracious and loving. And he wants nothing more than to speak into your life and speak into your heart all of his truth, all of who he is, and to build you up and grow you in wisdom and knowledge and strength in him, in his power, through the Holy Spirit. We must, must have the Holy Spirit. We must in order to understand or to do anything. We can do nothing in our own strength. I praise you, Father, and I thank you, Lord, for pouring out truth upon me, Lord, that I may pour out of the abundance that you pour all over me and into me and out of me, Father. I thank you, Father, for you are so gracious, and your strength is forever, Lord. Your glory is forever. Your hope is eternal, and the joy that comes from you deep into us, Lord, is unspeakable. It is so wonderful to be your child, Father. I pray truth upon everyone. I pray that the eyes and ears that need to see and hear this would see and hear it, Father, and that the Holy Spirit would teach them the truth, Lord. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. Bye.